We've been tracking data since the mid-1990s, and there is one consistent area where churches say they are weak, and it is a major problem. It's been a problem for quite some time. It's still not fixed. Let's discuss it. So we have been tracking data longitudinally since what 1996 is that when the 1996 which is a reflection of the elderly status of your father and the fact that i weirdly started offering database results way back then now what was this particular report called back in the day was the church health report church health report no first 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 iteration was a church health survey second iteration was a church health report and now It is found home with Know Your Church. Yes, and by longitudinal data, what we mean is we have been asking the same questions of churches year after year. So while we've kind of changed— 160 questions, to be precise. Yes, and while we've changed the title and the branding and the presentation, even the delivery mechanism of the report used to be Scantron Sheets. Now it's all digital. Uh, Pre pre that, it was manual scoring, Sam. That's right. Pre that. The questions you did some of the manual. Scoring. The questions have remained relatively consistent, and we have been uh, tracking this. And we're actually working on a big project to highlight some of this longitudinal data that I am very excited about. Uh, one of the things that is not exciting, at least in terms of the results, although we feel very confident in the results, um, is how low evangelism has scored, continues to score. How low it continues to score. This is a big problem in the church. It is a big problem in the church for three reasons. Reason number one, it is a biblical problem. It is disobedience to the great commission of Christ. Keep in mind that Christ's last words on earth were, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And then he was ascended. He was taken to heaven. It was his last will and testament, and it is something that churches are sorely neglecting. The second reason that it is bad is it was low in 1996, but it continues to erode to today in 2022. That's reason number three. So you put those together. Here's what we know. Evangelism is weak in churches, number one. Leaders and members know it's weak. They tell us about the survey, number two. And number three, they don't know how to respond to this. This is a crisis that has been unstated in church life, particularly in North America. We've presented so many solutions any number of organizations, groups, denominations, companies like ours have presented any number of solutions, any number of problems, and here we are still in the same place. This is what churches recognize themselves as their biggest problem. We know exactly. it. We see it in the quantitative data. We see it in the qualitative data. We see it in uh, studies uh, where churches um, report themselves and then where we just study the church without them knowing that this is self, you know, without it being self-reported data. So no matter which way you look at this, it's often the number one issue. Why is evangelism lacking? What happened? Well, the, the, the big issue, of course, is just disobedience. But let's let's get into some of the practical understandings of how this disobedience was manifest. For years and years and years, probably three to four decades, we had evangelism programs. It started with uh, probably four spiritual laws was one of the earlier ones. It was really popularized with evangelism explosion. And then there was a short period of continuous witness training and then faith evangelism. And I'm missing a lot of them. The point is, we had a lot of evangelism programs. The number one complaint about these evangelism programs, it was heavy memorization, a lot of expectation away from home and away from uh, things that I need to do. And so churches said, you know, this program is just really too much. And after a couple of years, they said, we're not going to do it anymore. But they didn't replace it with anything else. They did away with the programs, but did not replace it. Many of them rightly critiqued, but... (laughs) <laughs> doing a, a, a an evangelism program that sort of works is better than not doing anything at all. Um, yes. So I, I, I get I get irked, particularly Sam, when someone criticizes an evangelistic attempt when most of them are not trying to do evangelism at all. Yes. 
The other problem here, so why is evangelism lacking in churches? And churches even, they know this, they admit it. Um, the second thing is that pastors are not leading by example. That, that I, I don't even like to mention this point because so much is already on the pastor. You know, if our pastor just did this, our church would be fine. If our pastor didn't do this, our church would be fine. I don't like mentioning this, but we cannot omit it. Pastors set the tone and the culture and the priorities, and most pastors do not have a priority of evangelism. It is the great satanic deception. If I were Satan, and don't you give me a comment on here where you affirm that in any way whatsoever, and I'm talking to not only my son, but I'm also talking to those who are viewing and listening. But if I were Satan, one of the things I would do is I would tell pastors to get busy doing other things, not necessarily bad things, but other things, and don't worry about the amount of time they spend on putting the gospel of Christ in front of their church as a priority for themselves. So we stopped doing evangelism the programs. We did not we did not replace them. Pastors are not really doing as good a job as they could do in leading by example. I think this third point is obviously an outflow of the first two points is that churches just don't celebrate evangelism. We we celebrate certain things, but we don't celebrate the work of evangelism. And if it's not highlighted, if it's not celebrated, it's not going to be part of the culture. You become what you celebrate. Whatever you celebrate in your church is ultimately what you will become over time. And I don't see a lot of churches celebrating the work of evangelism. What do we celebrate? We celebrate buildings. Oh, we got a brand new building built, and isn't it a great building? So we celebrate a facility. What else do we celebrate? Hey, our budget is, is, is above what we need. So we, so we celebrate money. Uh, again, neither one of those are bad celebrations. But how many times do we celebrate evangelism? Uh, for churches that have baptisms in their services, that is the perfect time to celebrate evangelism. But you need to celebrate what happened, not just the baptism that has taken place as well. Yeah, I actually had a, a member recently tell me that they grew up that you would never applaud for a baptism like that. It was a very serious moment, and and I get the respect of the what I would call an ordinance of the church. Um, I, I totally understand that, but you know, discouraging applause during a baptism, uh, I think is probably the opposite of what needs to happen. I mean, people need to be cheering and celebrating and. Uh, absolutely. It, it needs to be something that people just look to and, and, and absolutely just adore. Um, so we've stopped doing the programs. The pastors could probably do a little better leading by example. Churches are not s celebrating evangelism. Few, there, there are few equipping resources that exist for evangelism. This is something that, you know, I was kind of surprised about because I recently wanted to do some evangelism training at my church, and there are some things that are out there, but it's actually very limited. So for this to be one of the biggest issues in the church, there's not a whole lot of content creators like us um, producing resources that help. We will. It's coming. We are. <laughs> yeah. We shall. We have a we have a big initiative that, that you know, little for those of you who tune into the YouTube channel. By the way, this this content only available on YouTube. So thank you for tuning in. Um, we'll just announce it here. We got something coming, and it's going to be exciting. Yep. 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 Maybe a few that months away. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to act like it's next week or anything. So it's it, we're we're working on the. Reminds me of that '60s song by Three Dog Night. You remember Eli's coming? You remember that song? Uh, no. I I don't know that I know an Eli, um, and I've heard of the band Three Dog Night, but I would not know their songs. Well, we can say evangelism's coming. Yes. Yeah, not Eli. But I would assume that we Girl, can't. you better watch your heart, the, your heart. There's probably some licensing what? things associated with using their tune. So probably. But the good thing is, is that YouTube is not going to pick up on the tune because you sing so out of tune. That, that is exactly right. Nobody gets the tune because I'm so off note <laughs> on that. So no, no big deal. 
Uh, so honestly, we do need more uh, equipping resources for evangelism. We've got equipping resources for a lot of things, but not so much for evangelism. And that gets us hey, to our... Hey, fit- what, 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 wait, before, you, before you get to this last point, you remember this song? It's evangelism in the 21st century. It's evangelism where God loves a plenty. You remember that? Yeah, that was the song that you wrote about your first book. And I sang to my three boys. Which has got me very curious. Um, and I am I am just going to take a point of privilege here and go to eBay and see if uh, if that book is available. I just um, bought 17 of them from eBay, Sam. Did you really? I, I have been trying to get every copy. I am. I, I could. I could point over to the corner of my my study right here. I am piling them up because there were only five thousand printed, and they sold pretty quickly. And Billy Graham wrote the forward, and I have been trying to collect those. Well, so. there are now more available on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds like I need to go back to eBay and get evangelism and, in the twenty. And now that century. you've announced that, there's probably some people that tune into your content and you know have a copy, and they're going to put it on eBay for like three hundred dollars and make you buy your own book back from them. I am n- I am not worth three hundred dollars. <laughs> I can guarantee you, I haven't paid. What What's the price of one of them? Just Nine, nine bucks. Yeah, that's typically what I've been paying. There you I've, go. I've been trying to get them all. I've been trying to get as many as I could. I want my grandchildren to have one. I want my grandchildren to have each of my books. There you go. Okay. So um, we've uh, point five here. Um, more energy is dedicated to inward ministries than outward ministries, and this is so many churches. I don't know the percentage off the top of my head, but man, we pour a lot of energy into inward things, and we do not expend a lot of energy on outwardly focused ministries. We pray a lot for inward ministries, those who are sick, those, those who are going through emotional problems and family problems, as we should. We hardly ever pray to get into the harvest field for people who are not followers of Christ to come to Christ. We pray inwardly, and we do inwardly. And the results yep. are we become inward. Well, there you go. There's five reasons why evangelism is lacking. And again, this is this is self-reported data. This is well, whatever, however you look at it, whether you're analyzing or whether you're hearing from churches directly. Um, what do churches say is their biggest problem today? Their biggest issue? It is a lack of evangelism. We've given you five reasons. You know what they why. need, Sam? You know they, what need they need evangelism in the 21st century. They need the church revitalization checklist. It is a hopeful and practical guide to leading your congregation to a brighter tomorrow. That book is the best book on church revitalization written in the history of humanity. And I absolutely love it. Yes, I know that you wrote it. And I know that there is some potential familial prejudice that is there, but I got no prejudice. I love that book. Well, it is, it is our show on YouTube. And so we get to promote what we want to promote. Church Revitalization Checklist, link below. It, it, it is more up-to-date than my dad's book, Evangelism of the 21st Century. Yeah, yeah, and Billy Graham didn't write your forward because he's dead. I, well, you know what? Pick up both books if you like. Also, we are offering a free 30-day trial to our Silver membership. Uh, you can go to churchanswers.com slash free. Give us, a, give us a look. We'd love to have you as a member of Church Answers. We've got a community of about 1,900 church leaders, and we're really proud of how they all interact in our forum that is Church Answers Central. It's a great place to ask questions, to offer advice, to hear from experts. So you can go check it out for 30 days free. Uh, Pretty easy to do. Churchanswers.com slash free. Link is below. Also, please hit that thumbs up for us. It helps the algorithms. Uh, And subscribe. Yep, there you go. Uh, we really appreciate those of you who tune into YouTube. We do offer this content unique to YouTube, so help us continue to get it out there and visit us at churchanswers.com where we are growing healthy churches together. 